Hello there. This violin is a Glarry violin that I purchased from eBay something like 12 months ago for less than £30. So it was cheap as chips and basically I just bought it to see what it was like, see if I could use it, see if I could play with it and obviously I used it in a series of all the beginner lessons that I um, produced on my channel. So um, yeah, I had quite a bit of use out of this and it's been a very handy little violin. <laughs> Still got the same strings on it so basically I haven't changed anything but I spent quite some time on a video showing how I set this up getting the string height correct getting the um, strings to wind on correctly basically just looking after the instrument and showing anyone who may not know how to set up a violin like this because when they come through from say somewhere like eBay they come through and really there is a fair bit of sorting out and setting up. You have to get the bridge set to the correct height. And that's something that I went through on the, my earlier video. Now there's a link to that video in this description. So you can find that if you're coming from that starting point. <clears throat> However, this video is now concentrating on the Glarry electric violin. Now this is um, supposedly the same company but I guess it's a generic name for violins but it's sold as a Glarry violin and in a few moments I'll show you the advertisement on eBay and exactly what I paid for it which was £41.99 sterling. Now I've written down what that is actually for um, anyone who's curious, if the American dollars, it would be 57. And this included postage as well, so it came complete. Canadian dollars, 71. Um, Australian dollars, 76. And Euros, 50. So you can hopefully kind of get an idea. It's, a, it's a, and once again a very cheap instrument. Um, why did I get this? Well, I got this because... I needed something to play outside um, in all weathers. <clears throat> when I play, do an outside gig, sometimes it's useful to have a, a, um, a violin that you can just sort of pick up and not worry too much about because it's low cost. It's electric, it's got a pick up and it puts out, it has an output, a quarter inch jack there. So very useful. And I thought, well, at the same time, I can do a review on this for YouTube. For someone like yourself who might be interested, curious perhaps, or you may be buying it for a, as a present for someone, and you may be considering, well, should you, shouldn't you? Well, once again, this video shows you how to set this instrument up, particularly if you've not had a lot of experience. And it shows you everything that came with the violin, so there's quite a lot that comes with it. It's amazing, actually. Um, so I've very much tried to keep it simple and show you exactly a very basic way of setting this instrument up. So you could give it on as a present to someone. Um, the advantage I think over this one is, is slightly quieter than the previous one. But of course this one is electric so you plug it in uh, or oh, you could put headphones on I guess but there's no headphone output on this so you would need to put it through a little preamp but I'll talk about that later anyway but um, so this video very much is for anyone who's looking at these and thinking you know have I got the skill well hopefully you have so um, let's have a look at the advertisement now that I first noticed on eBay that attracted me and uh, decided for me basically to purchase the thing and um, let's have a look now now you can see from the advert here everything that's included with this violin 
Um, it's quite remarkable actually. There's a whole host of equipment. There's the tuner, there's um, a clip-on pickup that you can plug into the tuner. There are a spare set of strings, um, obviously the violin bow, there's the rosin that you need to, um, to make the violin grip the strings or the violin bow grip the strings. So pretty much it's got, you've got everything there, even the output lead, the cable to plug into an amplifier is provided. And this one, as I say, cost £41.99, including postage. So there was no extra cost on top. So now I'll show you exactly what arrived. OK then. So let's have a look at what has arrived with this Glary violin. Um, as you can see it's got the case and there are some instructions here. Um, pretty basic by the looks of it. These are the same instructions that came with the previous Glary acoustic violin that I purchased and reviewed some time ago, maybe about 12 months ago. Um, same sort of information, a bit of information about tuning up. So let's have a look what else is in this uh, case. Just remove the cover. Okay, so there's the violin. The bridge, of course. There's the pickup, the piezo pickup that will transmit the sound and um, yeah this is the bridge here it's not don't, don't think it's shaped at all on the bottom of the feet but in looking at that curve there that looks about right to me that looks as though it will sit into that little piezo pick up housing there without too many problems and I can see straight away that that side is slightly wider than that side so that will be the higher side so that will tend to go towards the the lower G string side <clears throat> I'll hold that up so you can see it <clears throat> So this part here seems to be slightly wider than this part. So that's what you've got to do. If you're not sure about that, of course, you can always get your measure and just check. Now, I'm just measuring from the corner there to the, the bottom of the foot. And that looks about 27, maybe 28 mil. And on this side, it appears to be around about 25, 26 mil. So that's definitely the higher part there. So that's the part that would normally go towards the thicker string, the G string on the violin. Let's have a look what else comes with this violin. Now, actually, there's quite a lot. This is the, um, the shoulder rest, which I, I personally don't use shoulder rests, but I know a lot of people do. So uh, that looks fairly substantial, actually. That's, uh, yeah, it looks like it's a plastic, all made from plastic. Uh, yeah, pretty much all made from plastic. So probably do the job okay, I should think that. Um, I must try that at some stage. And in the next bag we've got a cable. Um, I'll just take that out for you and have a look at that. There we are. Yeah, now that's a standard quarter inch jack cable. That's a good thing because some of these electric violins they have an eighth of an inch jack, a mini jack. 
which really is, is not as suitable as a quarter inch jack because if you do any kind of playing outside where you're going to play in, through an amplifier you're going to find that most of the amplifiers that you see will be expecting you to be using a quarter inch jack so that's a, that's a good thing that's that's pretty good really so that's handy and I notice it's got a a right angled jack there so I'm assuming that's what plugs into the violin body so what else have we got here oh this is interesting there's a contact microphone now that's remarkable really because we've already got a pickup here this piezo is is the main pickup let me just show you that just bring that into closer into the um, into the camera and as you can see there's actually a tone control here now this is a, a passive tone control in other words there's no electricity required to um, operate this you don't need to put a battery in that's the point and the way it kind of works is it it, it reduces some of the top frequencies I imagine that's certainly what the tone control will do and I imagine the volume control will simply just attenuate the level of the signal coming out from the P8 so so what that basically means is it will just drop the volume slightly which is very useful because if you're plugging into an amplifier to give you just a little bit of control is it really what you need so that if it's a bit too loud you can reduce the volume or if it's a bit too quiet you can up the volume so that's useful now the important thing is there's a, a quarter inch jack output now I just love this idea because on every electric violin I prefer to see that because that's a standard size it's in a reasonable place it's not going to get in my way because I play um, the violin as um, uh, let me see with my left hand I, I hold the the neck and with my right hand I play with the bow so it might be awkward if you're a, a left-handed person uh, you might have to redrill the hole over there perhaps but certainly for someone like myself who's right-handed um, that's that's going to be very useful there um, I see there's a small scratch there where these um, these fine tuner adjustments are situated I can see that they haven't put a piece of foam underneath which is a shame really because it's scratched I don't know if you can see that but it's sort of marked it's marked underneath now that's not a problem for me because this is not a gift for a grandchild or something like that where that might be slightly upsetting this is um, not only as a demonstration today with this video but it's also going to be used for live performance work I'm going to use this when I play outside I do occasional bookings outside where I play in the open particularly in the winter and it's better to perhaps not take out your best violin so my, my plan here is just to use a felt tip just to um, yeah there's, there's not a lot of ink in this felt tip I can see that now so um, I've got a plan B of course plan B is a brown colored pencil and I would just um, just color that in plan B doesn't seem to be working very well either so plan C I might just use a little bit of the old um, kiwi boot polish as soon as I can open the lid there we go there we are kiwi boot polish brown boot polish that usually does the trick and I might just put a little bit of that on like so and just rub that in yeah that that seems to be doing the trick so as far as I'm concerned I'm not too bothered about that but that may concern you if you're buying this as a present for someone okay moving on so we've got this contact microphone 
Well, the the only reason I can see for having this um, microphone, which I think clips onto the bridge like that when it's in position, and once again it's got a nice substantial quarter inch jack on there, so that's fantastic. Um, the only reason I can see for having that might be if you want to um, either use it as a separate pickup or perhaps use this device here which is the tuner which is quite remarkable all this for the um, for the amount that I've paid it's quite remarkable really I mean normally the, these things are expensive no, not terribly expensive but they obviously do all add up so to say all of this has come with the violin is quite remarkable and there we are we can see the instructions printed in um, Mandarin I suspect something like that well um, okay so it's a it's a, it's a standard tuner um, nothing's happening I'll have a look at that in a minute ah but I can see that there is a jack input so I'm imagining that that will go in there like that and I can tune my violin absolutely accurately now if this is for a beginner yeah it's very useful to have these things but let's face it you know um, tuning the violin let's just get the thing strung up and working first of all I think we must turn that on there oh yes there we are I've just pressed the button on the end there and it's kind of come on oh that's the note of A well that's very useful okay so we'll come back to that and uh, my goodness me I'm still not finished here there's still things coming out there's a set of full set of strings despite the fact that the violin has come strung already there's a full set of spare strings that's useful um, so I'll uh, keep those handy and of course in the end there is the jolly old rosin which you need because this oh this is slightly cracked there we are this will actually make your bow come to life it will make it work it's like um, it, it allows the horsehair on the bow to grip the strings more efficiently and make them vibrate which is basically how the sound comes out of the violin so um, that's what the rosin is for so don't lose that that's very very useful okay so I'll move all this equipment that's come with this violin it's quite remarkable really there's, there's an awful lot of it yep turn that off <clears throat> um, <clears throat> And we'll see what we can do with this thing. Unclip that. Now, number one, I notice the um, the distance here, the di distance there on the um, the I think this is called the nut of the violin. If it's not, I'll no doubt get 200 comments saying you've got that wrong. But I think it's called the nut. Anyway, um, I can see that the strings are a little bit too high. They're a little bit proud. And really they need to go down a small amount. So that's something I'll come back to. Um, let's just try getting this bridge in position. Let's see what we've got here. So I said that that was the higher side. That's the widest part. So that needs to go onto the thicker string. Like so. Now here we go. This might be a bit of heave ho here. Because I'm going to lift those strings around to the top of the fret. Not the fretboard. I'm thinking of guitars here. To the top of the fingerboard. Just put them roughly in position for the time being and now I've got to kind of get those underneath. Now I can feel there's a bit of pressure there, it's not happy about me doing that. 
So I suspect I'm going to have to loosen these strings off a little bit here. So I'm just going to take the tension out of these strings. Actually these, pe these pegs are not, not too bad, they fit quite well. I'm just going to give myself plenty of slack. There we go. And then just sit that into this piezo pickup housing. There you go. <clears throat> right. Now look, that is pretty close to be honest. That is pretty close. When I think of the amount of work I had to do on the uh, Glarry acoustic violin, um, that is remarkably close to how I think the setup should be. Because I found that if I left around about six millimeters between the top of the fingerboard at the end there and the top of that thick string, the G string, that was a fairly comfortable height for that string to be above the fingerboard. And likewise with the thin E string here, I found that around about four millimeters was a comfortable height. Now looking at that, that appears to be at the moment around about five mil. And over here we're on about seven millimeters. So we're not a million miles away there. So I probably won't need to take very or very little off this this bridge and I can see looking at the the actual shape of the thing that yeah I might just take a little bit off either end okay so I'll just gently slide that out again now I've got my faithful piece of glass paper here Okay, from my local hardware shop. Um, it's pretty coarse. This this is this is um, sixty grit, so that's pretty coarse. But I, I like to get to where I want to go quickly, so um, I don't like to use something that's too fine. So this this um, this regular glass paper that I bought from hardware shop. Um, some kind of carbon carbon oxide i think it says i can't read it properly anyway it's just regular glass paper and um i just want to take a bit off either side so here we go let's see how we get on um right so i'll just take a little bit now this i, I better box a bit clever here and just put a mark on which way round these strings go. So that's the thick one. So I'll just put a little mark there so I know that's thick. And I know that's thin. So I'll put a mark perhaps down the bottom end there. There we go. That's the top and that's the bottom, you see. There's logic in my madness. So here we go. I'm going to take a little bit off here. Now I don't want to go too wild at this because you know you can take too much off so really you, you just want to take your time doing this bit and of course if your strings are the correct height that's six mil there and four mil there above the fingerboard then don't do anything leave the bridge as it is and also of course I could if I wanted to, just slightly flatten those feet. But I don't want to do it too much because they're already quite thin, those feet. You, oh, sorry, you can't see there. They're already quite thin, those feet. So I don't really want to go too wild with that either. Uh, so, maybe a smidgen more. And a smidgen more there. And let's see if we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so that is the top. That's the G-string part. 
So, um, let's have a look and see how that is. Okie dokie, now, um, you know, that is not far off. That's about, well, it's about 7 mil. Bottom end is about four, five, nearly five. So I can just take a little bit more, I think. So here we go. <clears throat> now, of course, if you're doing this for a, for a present for someone, it can be a bit nervy, this. I understand that. But don't listen, because, or I should say, don't worry, because... You can buy a replacement bridge quite easily. Um, you don't need to pay a fortune for it either. Um, they, these, thing, these things seem to be quite cheap on eBay. <clears throat> but as I say, the best the best rule is is to take uh, small steps, just small steps, and keep checking regularly. And that's 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 a good good idea altogether to be honest. Yeah, I'm gonna call it a day on that. Yeah, I think we're there. So I've got a distance of about four mil there, six uh, sorry, four mil there, six mil there, and I've not taken anything off the top because I want there to be that curve you see, otherwise I'll never be able to bow the correct notes. And trust me, if it's this is a present for a young child, then they are going to find that quite a challenge anyway. So you want to make sure there's a fair bit of curvature on there. The other thing I, I did say is the um, the gap here. It's uh, too proud. I can show you Pat's more clearly now. Let's try and get this in on the camera so you can see... Um, I don't know if that's coming across clearly, but I can tell that that gap there on that nut is just a little bit too high. It could just go down a little bit. So I've got something I can do here. Um, I've got these things here. These are called needle files. They're pretty good because they're quite fine. And... Uh, They'll, they'll make a small nick in the end there quite well. Now, yeah, that's quite a fine one to be honest. So I really want something with a nice fine point on it. That's that's fairly pointed. That one there, that's like a, an oval, a very thin oval kind of shape. I doubt that you'll be able to see that, but it's quite thin on the edge. That's the point. So I'm going to sort of just take that down a little bit. So I'll just shuffle the strings out of the way. Can you see? Shuffle the strings out of the way. And then this really is a question of, you know, taking your time. Do not rush this. You don't want to go too far. Like most things really with woodworking and setting things up, it's a question of trying things out I'm just checking that they're right. I guess if you made a fluff and you went too far, you could always put a little bit of araldite in there or something, just a smidgen, and then just file back on that to bring the level up. But um, hopefully I won't, I won't need to do that. I'm sure some people would use a knife to do this, but personally I, I steer clear of knives if at all possible, because um, I like a very slow, measured way of doing things. And, and using a needle file, for me, it, it works out perfectly. And I really want this to work well, because I want to use this next weekend when I'm playing outside. I've got a little, uh, little booking in a one of the local towns where they put an event on at weekends. Mm, still a bit high, still a bit high. Yeah, I've got this event on um, 
where they um, put lo local local musicians and things on for the um, the shoppers. It's lovely. People um, going by doing their shopping and things, and uh, we're playing them nice music. So hopefully they don't throw things at us. Generally, people seem to be very relaxed about it. They enjoy listening, and um, they usually sit down and they might have a coffee and uh, just listen to some of the music we're playing. And so this this violin is quite useful for that. Might, well, I'm hoping it will be very useful for that because um, it won't matter if it's um, out in all weathers. I wouldn't like to take my um, more expensive um, instrument out um, because of course um, it, it's uh, perhaps a little bit more fragile. Okay, so I'm gonna put stick that underneath now. See where we're at with that. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad, it's, it's starting to look as though it could uh, play a tune or two. Maybe it's still a fraction too high, but we'll see. I'm going to set this up now, you see, and, and try and play it. So that uh, that should be good fun. Now, the um, tuning the thing up, of course, we've got this wonderful tuning device. Let's switch this on. Okay, switch it on. He said, famous last words. There we go. <coughs> oh my goodness me. Oh dear, what have I done here? Um, okay, so. Uh, yeah, it appears to be a metronome as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I love technology, especially when it confuses the heck out of me. I'll turn it off. And on again. Ah, there we are. That's always the secret. It's like computers. If you if 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 computers playing up, turn it off and switch it on again. Same with this thing. So that's playing me the note of A, <coughs> which is 440 hertz. And uh, if you don't know what a hertz is, don't worry. That's one cycle per second. So it's 440 cycles per second, basically. So it's like your string vibrating 440 times a second, which is a lot. So um, that's, that's why it sounds like that. So um, let's try and tune this thing up. Now you've got to make sure the bridge doesn't collapse on itself. I'll just turn you off for a minute. When you are tuning this up, You've got to make sure that that bridge doesn't drop over and um, there's another thing you have to think about here I'm sorry to say is that when you are pushing that bridge into position and I'm glad that the makers have stuck the piezo housing down firmly to the top of the violin body I'm very pleased about that because it means I can sort of shuffle the bridge from side to side which is useful because it means I can get the positioning of that bridge about right whilst the strings are not under full tension. Now you really want to aim to have a sort of, well let's just make it simple. If you can Try and get the string to be almost parallel with the edge of the fingerboard. Try and get the string to be almost parallel with the edge of the fingerboard and then just take it out a fraction. So it's just kind of running in. There's the gap here is slightly more than the gap there on the edge of the fingerboard. That's the way I like to do it because it just gives me a little bit more space when I'm playing up the up the up the fingerboard. Likewise here you see I'm going to try and get that running parallel and then just a little bit more of a gap. And now I want to get the strings fairly evenly spaced. There's a bit of a trick here really isn't there trying to get those evenly spaced. Is it something you can do with a tape measure? I don't think so. Is it something you have to do by eye and your human judgment? Yes. 
I think it is. And um, one thing I've forgotten to bring with me is a small pencil because I should now mark. I'm going to put a mark on there, you see. Of course, I've got the worst pencil in the world. Um, one moment, I shall go and get one. Okay, so I've got a pencil now. This is just like Blue Peter. I've got a pencil and I think it works. So I'm just going to mark on either side of each of those strings where I roughly think they should be so that I can then when I take the strings off I can make a little nick in the top of that bridge. Now some people have said to me you should use a knife but as I've explained um, there may be children watching this perhaps uh, you know uh, and there might be people with, with, you know, who aren't very happy about using a knife. I'm certainly in that category. So I prefer to use those needle files to make little indentations in the uh, top of the bridge there. There's the one I was using. So I would, what I would do basically is just make a little mark in between those two lines. There we go, so that that string has fitted in there now. So I might just do that one next one now. There we go. There we go. I've just got to watch the string, of course. I don't want to damage the string. There we are. Incidentally, I should just say if you are buying this for a present for someone or you are buying it for yourself because you would you've always fancied learning to, to play the violin um, on my channel uh, I'm, I'm not a violin person as such I'm what is known as a fiddle player um, in other words sort of I tend to play folk music on the on the fiddle whoops um, and of course when I call it the fiddle I'll just hold this down here when I call it the fiddle it's the same instrument violin fiddle exactly the same it's just the way that you play it um, so I tend to play folk music on the fiddle um, there we go yeah, so that's kind of, that's, that's roughly in, the, I think, in a, looks to my mind to be a comfortable spacing of the strings across. So what I was going to say there was, I've done a whole series of lessons, about 20 odd, 22 lessons in fact, freely available on YouTube. I don't charge for them uh, at all. And the, the musical notation is all there, all free, for anyone who wants to learn to play the fiddle. And it might be useful if you want to go down that route. As I say, I don't profess to be a violin teacher, but I do, I do sort of class myself as a fiddle player. Now this takes a little while. Tuning a violin is never a pleasant thing. It always seems to uh, to take a little while and you can't really rush this at all. I, I personally prefer to go slower rather than quicker. I've, I've learned that it's, it's better sometimes to bring, to stretch the strings slowly. Although I must admit the strings that come with these violins, these glary violins, are, they don't seem to, they don't seem to um, go too much out of tune once you've got them up to tuning. Some strings are known for relaxing an awful lot, maybe for about four or five days and keeping on going out of tune, but these, these strings stay fairly constant once you've got them in tuning. 
Now let's get a Not far off. Now I've got to watch that bridge doesn't drop. So if it starts to go over like that, just push it back. Get both hands on the bridge like that holding it from the bottom and kind of slide it back okay now your bridge really should be either well supposedly it's supposed to be almost vertical with the body and then slightly tilted back but you know what I found with these electric violins is sometimes for the piezo to make better contact with the bridge and the piezo is actually a strip of material, um, metallic material, which is, um, I think it's some sort of a ceramic. And it's, it's, um, it's either, it's coated onto a layer, a thin layer of metal. And as the strings vibrate, they vibrate the bridge and in turn that vibrates this thin layer of, I think it's a ceramic, on the top of this thin layer of metal. And as it vibrates, the, um, the effect of the ceramic, because of its uh, molecular structure, and we're getting a bit scientific here, I know, but it creates a very small voltage. And it's the changes in that very small voltage that are sent through to your amplifier. It's quite remarkable, really. So the whole thing doesn't require any batteries at all. It's all uh, the, the energy it creates is all created via the vibrations of the strings that you're playing. And that vibration uh, travels down the bridge onto this um p eight so strip housing the uh the the bridge then vibrates and sends that through um which vibrates the ceramic which creates a small electrical charge and that small electrical voltage is transmitted through the wire along the cable to your amplifier so it's quite a remarkable thing and it uh, doesn't require batteries that's the important point so I'm just try and get that almost vertical if I can because I found if the um, on an electric violin if the feet of the bridge are sitting nice full square on the piezo strip you kind of get a slightly better sound sometimes if it's tilted away it can sound a bit screechy so if you drop it you know pretty much full square on the um, piezo strip it should give you the best sound that you're going to be able to achieve um, so let's carry on with tuning up I've got the A that's the I can actually change the tuning on this. Uh, I haven't really figured it out yet. Oh, I see. I just pressed that button there. That's. Oh my goodness me. That's the D. This should be G D A E. You see. Let's see where we go now. There's the E. See here, don't go wild, just take your time with this. That's not bad. Now you've got your fine tuners, of course, they can be used to actually twiddle the um, tuner 
to actually get it to the right. Oh, I see, I can press those little buttons there. That's the A. And it's dropping out of tune. So this, this part is perhaps a little bit slow for you. And we could edit this. But I'll carry on for the time being. That's not far off. Enough for that for the time being. That's not quite right, but we're getting close. Um, time to look at the jolly old bridge now. Uh, sorry, the, the bow, which is a rather delicate affair. It's um, made from um, mahogany, I believe it looks to be mahogany. Oh, and I should just mention the construction of this violin. Um, yeah, I think it's, I still feel it's some sort of plywood in some way. Um, it's very well done, but I, I think it looks rather like some sort of birch faced plywood. And I think they must have invented a very clever technique for pressing the shape of the violin. Because, of course, a violin normally would be cut from a, a piece of wood. Sometimes it would have a, a splice down the middle uh, or, or a joint down the middle. And the, the two halves would be, it would be then re-glued together so you get a beautiful figuring pattern on the back. But with this one, of course... It looks, to my mind, to be either birch-faced plywood or maple-faced um, plywood. A very thin one, and because it looks like it's some sort of plywood edging on there. Can't really tell. But I think they must have developed a technique for pressing these in some way, because normally a craftsperson would make a violin from a solid block of wood and carve it out and spend a lot of time getting just the right dimensions but I suspect this is just um, plywood top and bottom um, not sure about the sides they may be as well but it, it's pretty well done and obviously it's done for a price that's the point this I think is possibly plastic this is this uh, chin rest looks to be plastic. Um, this tail piece obviously is plastic. Yeah, so uh, the um, the fingerboard is is probably painted hardwood of some sort. I doubt it's going to be ebony. Um, but yeah, overall construction is quite amazing, really. So um, that's the body of the instrument, and of course this is the the um, the bow, which appears to be a mahogany of some sort, but you know, who can tell? Very difficult to know, but as long as it does the job, it's fairly light, so that's okay. It's a pretty light bow, actually, that's quite good. And it tightens up okay, yeah, tightening up fine. And um, then, of course, you've got to. Um, to make this thing work you've got to spend a little while with the um, with the rosin now this rosin comes oh, look at this it's like broken bits of toffee and um, this rosin comes with don't worry about this because actually rosin does last a long time this rosin comes with a very glossy surface there's really no way you want that <clears throat> So this is where your trusty piece of glass paper is going to come in again. There we go, one trusty piece of glass paper and you just want to rough it up a little bit. <clears throat> there, I'll be a bit of a ruffian. That's it, nice and rough now. <clears throat> bit like my voice today. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to spend a while doing this because, you know, if you try and play that, 
you'll get nowhere. You'll have the silent violin, you see, that you really wanted, because no one will hear you playing it. In fact, maybe that would be an advantage if you give it to somebody who's just learning. Say, go and play this now. Don't put, you know, just hide the rosin so that when they're playing it, you can't hear them. No, that would be cruel. Let's, uh, let's do it properly. So, um, yeah, you've got to spend a long time doing this, actually. You, um, you'd be amazed how long it takes to, to get this rosin to start gripping on the horse hair. Because of course this 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 hair here is is well I believe it's it's horse hair, so presumably there are lots of horses running around with no tails or, or they've I don't know how it works. <clears throat> Maybe the horse hair is cut from the tails of the horse. Perhaps somebody will comment and tell me all about that. No doubt they'll know. Um, yeah, I can feel it's just starting to grip a little bit now. So I really should be spending about 10 minutes doing this because otherwise it just won't have any effect whatsoever. But anyway, because of course I want to get on with this video. Starting to make a sound. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So I need to work more of this rosin in. And as I say, don't worry if it doesn't make a sound at first. It won't until you spend ages doing this. And then it will gradually start to grip the strings. I remember when I first did this on the first violin I ever got, which was once again a cheap violin like this. And I thought, oh my goodness me, I'm taking this back to the shop. <laughs> it, it just wouldn't make a sound anyway it, until I discovered that I had to do this for ages um, it really working that rosin in and, and particularly in the centre of the bow that's that's where it takes time and uh, yeah for some reason we, we, everything that comes with these violins is very good apart from the rosin in which always seems to be very crumbly ah we are getting somewhere. So, I'm going to progress with that now. Um, and then, we're nearly there. Oh, goodness me, this, this, just turn this on again. That's the A. Then the next string up from there, the, the A, is the E. Probably the best thing I can do now is um, oh, starting to sound like a violin. Okay, so that's that set the thing up. The bridge is pretty much oh, it's leaning forward slightly now. So I'm going to do my technique of moving it fractionally back. A bit scary at first if you're not used to doing that, but violins are remarkably strong, you know. Yes, I uh, I can vouch for that. Um, having once almost sat on a violin, I can tell you now they're quite strong instruments. And um, yeah, I remember one gentleman who had had too much to drink. He, uh, I had my violin at the front of the area of the stage, and we were on a level with the. Um, with the people in the party and things had got a bit wild and one gentleman had had too much to drink and decided that he wanted to leap over the um, monitor speaker at the front of the stage which he did and at the same time he managed to kick my violin across the room <laughs> fortunately it wasn't an expensive one and um, it remained almost in one piece. I was quite easily able to repair it, so I was glad of that. So these things are strong. So don't be too worried about, you know, that kind of thing, moving the bridge around by putting two hands on it and sort of pushing it one way or the other. But there we go. I think that's about right. Now that looks set up to me. 
I think the proof will be in the eating and that's the next thing of course to uh, play this instrument for you and uh, give you a demonstration. Thanks for staying with me for this long by the way. Well as you can see I'm still applying rosin to this bow. Um, you know you're getting close when you can feel the rosin starting to slowly grip on the horse hair which is what is actually happening now so I can tell that it's gripping on the on the rosin the horse hair is now starting to grip so that tells me that the horse hair should start to grip the violin strings okay I think that should be enough I've done that for quite some time now to get this bow working. <clears throat> now the other thing I've discovered is this tuner, very useful, um, has a sort of traffic light system on it or a stoplight I think you call them and which is quite nifty because I can unplug that for a moment I can actually hold the violin up here and see if I'm in tune and it's telling me yes it's gone green so it's telling me I'm playing the note of E which is the top string on the violin the next string down is the note of A and as you can see there's a green light there, LED, telling me I'm correctly tuned. The next one down is the D. And I can see once again that that's tuned correctly. And finally the bottom string, the thick string, is the G. Yeah, we seem to be in tune now, that's good. So that's very useful. And I do notice there's also the, uh, the pickup device that I could plug in. I haven't used this as such because there's been no need. Where might you need this? Well, I suspect you might find this useful if you're playing in a crowded area, maybe, and you, you couldn't, the violin couldn't the little microphone on this tuner couldn't correctly hear the notes that you're playing. It might be in a pub session maybe where there's lots of background noise. Ah, as you can see using the pickup <laughs> I can now get the same traffic light system or stoplight system telling me that I've got the correct tuning. That's the, the note of G I'm playing, which is the bottom string. So that's useful in a noisy, crowded environment where there is a lot of external noise and you want to just basically just tune up the violin and have the tuner hear nothing but the violin. Um, okay, so we'll put that down for the time being. Now, what does this thing sound like acoustically? Well, <clears throat> It's quite a mellow sound, sound, I would say. Um, it's obviously not a Stradivarius or anything like that, but it's only a cheap fiddle. So, yeah, but it kind of plays. That's the important thing. And uh, of course, this is an electric fiddle, so it's really hopefully should benefit when we play it through an amplifier. 
and I have my, I just so happen to have my trusty Roland Street Amp. There it is, it's a Cube Amp, fantastic amplifier. Um, bought that second hands many years ago off eBay for a really good price and it's been superb. Um, most of the effects have packed up on it but the actual the main part of it the reverb the tone controls they're all working perfectly and it's perfect for a for a violin player because we don't tend to use guitar effects anyway it's mainly the reverb that's of use <clears throat> and the tone controls now i'm going to plug this in and let's have a listen to this violin Okay, let's see what it sounds like. Blooming horrible. Um, it's too bright, too sharp. So, we need to think about this. Now, if you've watched any of my electric violin series videos I made, you'll know that with a, a, a passive violin, now passive means it's got no battery. A passive violin is sending the signal straight out from a piezo, the little electrical charge, the voltage changes, down the wire, straight into the amplifier. And this is an incredibly high impedance. Now, what, what am I talking about, a high impedance? It's like a very, very high resistance. Whereas this amplifier is designed for electric guitars, of course, and microphones which have a much lower impedance or kind of resistance. They're, they're usually moving coils. Um, electric guitar pickups are like little wound magnets and they send out a different kind of signal. Whereas this is really, really a different kind of beast altogether. So we need to sort of pacify it in a way. And what we do, is we use an interface. Oh gosh, this is getting complicated. Do not worry, because it's, it's, it's really quite simple. Now, I use a cheap old chorus pedal. This is something my brother-in-law gave me years ago. He was about to chuck it out. I said, no, I'll have that. And this chorus pedal has been fantastic as an interface. Now, you can buy specific ones. This, this is a Fishman interface here this is a really top market one that's a very very reliable interface and that well what basically what it does is it allows the violin to be matched to the amplifier so it, it reacts rather like a guitar then so it, it sounds more mellow basically there are other ones you can buy i like these graphic eqs that um that stands for equaliser, which basically means you can alter the amount of um, treble and bass and stuff like that. So you can see it gives you that EQ to fiddle around with. That's pretty good, actually, as an interface. And likewise, um, Behringer also make a, a specific one, an acoustic one for a guitar, but it also works for the violin. Now I'm not quite as fond of this one because the batteries don't last as long. Whereas with this one, the batteries last all day, no problem. Likewise with this one and also this one. The battery, the 9 volt battery, they seem to go on forever. So that's what you need if you're playing outside or you're playing a little performance and you don't want to be let down by the batteries packing up. So <clears throat> let me see now, I'll use this this very basic chorus pedal and I'm not really using it um, for the chorus effect I'm just using it as a as a as a go-between an interface to um, allow me to sound a little bit more mellow not my vocals the violin of course <laughs> so there we go it's plugged in We sound roughly in tune still, so let's see what difference it makes. It's quite loud, so I'm going to turn it down a smidgen. Oh, I can hear a difference now. Yep, 
yeah that's that's far more mellow and of course I've got a tone control and a volume control here I can fiddle around with that's the tone control set to its brightest no that's a bit too bright I'll, ta I'll take it down to the other end till um, the most of the top frequency is cut okay now this is an electric violin and let's face it violins sound wonderful when they're played acoustically but when they're um, sent through an amplifier they need something to beef them up slightly now if you're a rock and roller you might want to get your distortion pedal out and stuff like that and you know really go wild but if you uh, just want a mellow sound you can add reverb now most amplifiers well many amplifiers these days will include some form of reverb and this one does and I'm just going to stick on a little bit of reverb and we'll see what difference it makes pound violin in my opinion it feels like as I say it feels like a plywood violin but that's a slight advantage I think because when sometimes when you electrify a, a violin an acoustic one it can be a little bit bright because of course an acoustic violin is designed to work acoustically and throw out the sound and have a full range full spectrum of frequency but sometimes with electric violins you don't necessarily want a full frequency of uh, spectrum of frequencies because piezo pickups tend to be very bright sounding so sometimes it's quite an advantage to have something that's just going to take off the top curve of frequency and it seems that these kind of plywoody type violins which I think this is um, I might be totally wrong but it certainly feels like it's some sort of plywood they seem to have that effect so I'm quite pleased with this it's it's certainly doing the job and I, I'm quite happy to take this out and play outside <laughs> dropping slightly out of tune there that's because I only 10 minutes ago tuned this thing up of course you've seen the earlier part of this um, video where I was tuning the thing up so these strings are as I say they're holding their tuning quite well really they're a bit like cheese cutters they are quite bright and um, they're a bit sort of there's a bit of noise coming off the strings it's difficult to describe exactly what it is 
but um, I think you've got to bear in mind the cost of this instrument. What modifications will I make? Well, I've taken the strings down a bit now across the top of the nut. I've reduced that height of the string a little bit. I think I'm going to go spend some more time going a bit further on that. As I say, the best thing is don't go too far. Just keep doing bits at a time. Um, if you're buying this as a, as a present for somebody, then I, I think you might need to spend a week or so just fiddling around with it, getting it right. Um, and what else might I do to it? Well, I'll just let it settle down, basically. Just give it a chance to relax and then keep the tuning correct and see if uh, it gradually settles in, which I think it will. Oh, the other thing I think I'll do, the edge of the fingerboard is quite sharp. Now, you know, there's, there's one or two sharp point, points there. Now, I think this is only painted wood. I think it is. Having said that, when I was filing down there before on that nut, that was black all the way through, so I don't know. I'd be amazed if it were, was ebony. But anyway, um, I might just 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 sand a little bit of the edge off there or just plane a little bit off or use that needle file just to round off that edge because it's quite sharp on the edge. But that's about all, I think. <laughs> Before I finish, as I say, I'll give a plug to my electronic violin uh, videos. I've done an awful lot of them talking about these interfaces and amplifiers and effects pedals and things. And so if, if you are interested in that, I'll leave a link below this video so you can, uh, you can follow that up perhaps and see exactly um, what I've done in terms of exploring what's available for electronic violins. But yeah, I think value for money wise with this, it's pretty good really. It didn't take a lot of setting up, not as much as the previous Clary violin that I reviewed. And um, sounds all right as an acoustic as well really so so there you go um, I hope this has been useful for you I hope it's been interesting and um, if you are in that predicament where you're buying a violin as a gift for someone and you haven't got a clue about it be careful because you can spend 40 pound on um, a violin I don't know what that would be in dollars I don't know maybe 60 dollars 50 dollars maybe uh, and uh, then maybe $200 getting someone to set it up for you. So, you know, if you feel confident, have a go at doing it yourself. Because um, I didn't find this particularly difficult, but I obviously I've been playing fiddles for many years. But hopefully what you've seen me doing, and I've tried to leave the mistakes in so you can see what, what can go wrong as well as what can go right. So um, hopefully that will give you a little confidence in being able to tackle a, a project like this and get some, a violin set up for someone and maybe give it as a gift. Or you could use that trick, don't forget, if you're a parent and you've bought your, your darling son or daughter a violin, don't forget, hide the rosin. <laughs> they'll never know until they get back to school. But of course, they'll be playing for the first couple of weeks silently, which is a blessing. Either that or buy some earplugs. OK, well, have fun. Enjoy your time on while well, looking at the various videos on this channel. And it's, I hope this has been fun for you as well. Bye bye now then.